What Wayne doesn't know is that I'm also, in the next few days, doing everything I can, and I'm assuming it will work, to get a meeting with Caltrans to review with specificity each element of a document that Wayne has submitted that discusses an array of possible options here so I can fully understand what, where they're coming from. So the answer to the question is, I'm not sure that it requires the things you're talking about. I'm still not sure. But I have said this, and I'm going to make every effort to understand better and to advocate as much as I can. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there needs to be a project, and it's going to take a long time to build. Both of those things are true. The magnitude of that project is still very much in play, and I haven't decided what I think. Now, if Wayne, your question is, what does Caltrans think they want to do? I'm not sure I know what they want to do yet either. I sat down with Doug last week. I sat down with Doug Failing, who's going to make the decision yeah. last week, and we discussed this entire situation, and he's a real good poker player. Mm -hmm. He's waiting to hear what the public has to say and what you have to say. And so it is going to come down to our input to them. Okay. I, think, I think input is really important. You'll never hear me disagree. I think that's exactly right. But again, so the question was, why does X and Y and Z have to happen? My answer is, I'm not sure X and Y and Z have to happen. I am sure that an expanded freeway has to happen. And they're not the same thing. All right, what I'm going to do is, because um, of the issue of time and I want to get to sure. some other subjects, uh, I'm just going to let you know so that people can hear some of the other issues. Um, sure. That a proposed hook ramp on Sepulveda Boulevard at Sherman Oaks Avenue is going to turn that street, Sherman Oaks Avenue, from a quiet residential street into an on and off ramp for the 405 routing in another neighborhood. Uh, another lady writes, Encino Neighborhood Council, Bel Air, Beverly Crest Neighborhood Council, Federation of Hillsides and Canyons all have voted no projects of the Caltrans draft EIR with the design build smorgasbord of continuing multiple choices. Again, asking for your position on the, on this project, which we now know. Yeah, yeah again, I, I, if, if someone is saying, don't build any project, I will say I disagree with that. But I do think that there are lots of things that can happen to mitigate the negative impacts of this, as I said earlier, sort of recapitulation of where I've been before. And by the way, where I understand the Homeowners Association is too. Okay, um, gentleman here saying doesn't want the sound walls moved in Sherman Oaks on the Valley Vis Vista off-ramp area. Um, is there any update on the proposed waiver to keep the 11-foot lanes on oh, the 405 freeway? Is that what's the term to talk about? Yeah. yeah. No, that's okay. I, so right. I don't so, understand so it. One of the issues regarding the 405, so you got about water policy and about the width of lanes on freeways and stuff. There's a lot of stuff. So the one issue is, should freeway lanes be 12 feet wide or 11 feet wide? The federal government has a strong predisposition. They say for safety reasons, 12-foot lanes are a better idea. If you're driven south of the carpool lane on the 405, you're looking at an 11-foot lane. Okay? So one of the issues is, for the new carpool lane, for the old carpool lane, for any lanes on the 405, does Caltrans need to engage in what is called standardization of the lanes? Standard being 12 feet. Here's what I said about this. Ellen did a great job because no one could get a hold of any document that supported the idea that ostensibly it's safer to do 12 feet. So Ellen tenaciously found her way through and found the document, and the document doesn't say that. Because it's, a, I think, a federal study. The study is not, does not unequivocally say 11 feet are dangerous and 12 feet are safe. And in fact, the circumstances of a freeway have a lot to do with that. Is there lane changing happening? A lot of things are going on. So here's what I've said publicly many times. I'm a safety first guy. If the science tells us that you have to have a wider lane, and there are consequences for widening the freeway, which takes some people's territory, because it's safer to do that, and we can verify that, then I'm the safety guy and we have to deal with the consequences. But until I can be convinced that's what the, that the science says this, then I think we should seek a waiver from the federal government to do 11 feet instead of 12 because of the negative impact on surrounding communities. And right now, I haven't been convinced. Now, Caltrans has, and again, what this means in real life for you is, is a freeway widened more and therefore more intrusive into people's houses versus having a, a freeway that's what you drive every day, that's a lookout wider lanes. That's where the action is right now. 
and it's a complicated thing. And I'm just curious, does, does anybody, I, I've, I've asked you for a little q and I, I teach, so I can't help but to do this. Um, does anybody here disagree, and I hope you do if you, you say so if you are, disagree with the idea that if the feds can show that 11 feet are dangerous and 12 feet are safe, that should be the rule, but until they show that, we should be trying to mitigate the impact on widening by keeping the lanes more narrow. Who disagrees with that perspective? Yeah, what do you think, sir? You're talking about taking care of tomorrow and dealing with the advantages of that time. Right now, I don't think there's anybody here who has not been into a comparable situation in the parking lot, much less on the freeway. If we're going to continue driving escalades and navigators and all this crap, you are not going to be safe in an 11 foot lanes. You can't even get into a parking spot in the grocery store because of it. John, by the way, one of my smartest colleagues, I mean John Laird, so you have a very good name, I want you to know, um, he, he chairs the budget process. So, for, so you couldn't hear him, I was good name. John Laird said some very important things. He said basically, if people are going to drive SUVs the size of small houses, then you want, well he, he cussed a little bit, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> um, oh, you were thinking it, don't tell me you weren't thinking it. Um, then we ought to have lanes that can accommodate safely those big vehicles like Escalades and so forth. And it's a point I understand. I, I, I hear the point. I drive a Prius, so, you know. But I, I think it's important for us to do some balancing here. Please, on, on that point, and then I'll go back to the questions. Yeah. Um, Should we... Oh, hold on a second. We, we've got, yeah, we've got a lot of people that have questions. So we're going to stay with the questions. Thanks. Well, Ellen will talk to you. Okay, um, regarding transportation, this is a little off the subject, but of interest to many people. Basically, this unnamed person has asked, how can California deal with the safety, security, and air quality with allowing the federal program um, to go into effect, allowing trucks and truckers from Mexico to freely enter the United States and drive on our roads? Okay, yeah, I think it's a great question. And let's, let's break the question down for a second. But the questioner, I think, can really have in mind is diesel fuel vehicles are horrible. Diesel fuel vehicles send little particles into the air. My daughter, who is a great athlete, she's going to be, she's a 13 year old, and she's going to be a pitcher on the varsity team at North Hollywood softball team, right? Fast pitch. But she has asthma. No one in our family has asthma. This is not something that was passed down from one generation to another. She grows up in Los Angeles where this particulate stuff is in the air and it sticks to your lungs. Diesel is a bad thing. And you've seen studies that show that emphysema, asthma, and lung disease is much more prevalent along freeway corridors in large measure because of diesel powered trucks. We have, or we are now placing increasing restrictions on diesel vehicles. Mexico is not. So are those and, trucks diesel trucks? Yeah, almost invariably. And, and so, as a, the, the questioner is saying, why do we still allow those trucks to go back and forth? And this is a part of NAFTA that a lot of environmentalists thought was a very bad thing for precisely this reason. It's a federal issue, it is not a state issue, you know, I can't deal with some of the land issues you're talking about, that's not in my jurisdiction anymore, and I can't fix this. But I sure wish I could, because if I could fix it, what I would say is, before that truck is allowed to cross the border, I want to be sure there's a diesel trap on the back of that truck or a retrofit because our kids' lives are at stake because of this. That's what I think. Okay, uh, moving on to transportation. <laughs> <laughs> Where have we been? <laughs> Sorry, That's getting okay. late, long late. Yeah. Okay, what are the chances in the near future of having more state money to further develop rail transit and to increase the parking for the metro in the San Fernando Valley? And then this other question is related. Why are we not concentrating more on public transportation? The freeways are only going to get more congested no matter how many more lanes are added. I, I want to take that person home with me. Um, so uh, is that going to cause any family problems if I do that out there? Um, because I completely agree with the questioner. And I tried to say in my...